I wanted to start with something that you sort of teased out on Twitter and was later corroborated by Lee Smith, another great writer on national security and foreign policy we've had on the program before, where you discussed the fact that a, a little birdie told you essentially that the Obama administration had drafted some letters to the world's leading terrorist of the world's leading terror force, the Quds force of the world's leading terror regime, uh, the Iranian malocracy. What else can you tell us about that? Well, uh, actually, I don't know much more than that. It's, it was absolutely a little birdie. Uh, somebody who uh, I happen to know and who I happen to know is in a position to, uh, to, 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 under, to know this fact firsthand said, hey, did you know that uh, under the Obama administration, we sent letters, plural, to Qasem Soleimani? And I said, no, I didn't know that, but it's very interesting. Um, and so I, uh, I, 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 put, I put that out on, on Twitter. Uh, you know, so I pretended to be, a, I, I, I joked that I was an anonymous whistleblower. The joke being that everyone in Washington, D.C. knows that Eric Jaramella is the anonymous whistleblower on the Zelensky conversation that, that Trump is being impeached over. Um, and, you know, he's been walking around town all since this thing began. And you're not allowed, supposedly, you know, you're not allowed to say his name. If you write his name on Twitter, you get deplatformed and, uh, and so on. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. I'd like to be a, an anonymous whistleblower, too. Uh, you know, people... You get to walk into restaurants and people point at you and say, "Hey, there's the anonymous whistleblower." So uh, I'm I'm anonymous here. I'm not. Uh, when I talk to you about um, when I talk to you about uh, the the letters to Soleimani, I'm not Mike Duran at the Hudson Institute. I'm anonymous. Okay, I'll neither confirm nor deny that I'm Mike Duran as long as we're talking about this. We'll make sure not to leak your name to the Washington Post and uh, and the Times. And I think it is significant, though, to the extent they did write letters to Soleimani, and it's eminently believable because the administration took, the Obama administration took sanctions off of Soleimani as part of the so-called Iran nuclear deal in the first place. But it's quite an interesting contrast that they were probably writing letters hoping to come to some sort of agreement or accord with Soleimani, uh, whereas the Trump administration, Secretary Pompeo, drafted a letter to Soleimani, which basically said, knock off the malign activities or else, and the or else actually happened. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the, um, let's start with the last point first. The letter that Pompeo sent to, uh, uh, to Soleimani, actually be, was, he did so on the instructions of Donald Trump. I know this for a fact as well. Uh, Trump saw something in the intelligence uh, early on in the administration that worried him. Um, and he said, uh, I see that this guy, Soleimani, is organizing to kill Americans. I want to send him a letter, and I want to put him on notice that if he harms a hair on a single American, um, that there will be immediate and drastic uh, consequences. And um, I don't know how the decision was made. Uh, I guess you know maybe his advisor said, actually, Mr. President, I don't think you should be the one talking to Soleimani. So it, it fell to Pompeo. And Pompeo's letter was very short and very sweet, and it basically said, uh, I don't know the exact wording, but it basically said just what, what, I, what I said. If you harm the hair on one American, there will be hell to pay. Um, and, and that's the origin, that's the origin of, the, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the attack on Soleimani. I mean, uh, he, was, he was warned, and he was warned uh, time and again, and he ignored it, and he paid a price for it. That's the way it should be. 